Senior, number 16, Jack Heenan. At defense, sophomore, number 17, Tim Clark. Playing forward, sophomore, number 21, Rob Cardillo. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, this is the Canton Ice House, and today it plays host to the second round of the MIAA South Sectional Division II tournament between the Sandwich Knights and the Southeastern Regional Hawks. Southeastern coming in as the number two seed with only two losses on the year. They are wearing their home white jerseys. Blue stripe with the Hawk across the front and the Sandwich Knights in their navy blue jerseys 
with white trim. The 15th seeded Knights and the two seeded Hawks. The Hawks getting knocked out early last year. That was part of that fun week down at Gallo Ice Arena when they played directly after Cardinal Spellman. And they were undefeated on the year last year and they are finally trying to capitalize on a string of good seasons, the Hawks are. Canton Ice House, a beautiful facility. We were here last season for Brockton High's playoff matchup against Framingham. The newly renovated Ice House, two full-size rinks, workout rooms, anything you could ever ask for. There's a shot deflected wide for Southeastern. Sandwiches goalie. Diving on it. Number 15 on Southeastern's defense loses an edge, but the Hawks able to get back. so far between these two teams. Southeastern only one shot on goal so far. Here's their second pad save by the sandwich goaltender and he covers up for the faceoff 13-17 to go in the first period. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice here in Canton. Dump out here for Sandwich. A slap shot easily blocked by number five of the Hawks. And now it could be a semi break is broken up, but not out of trouble yet is Sandwich. Now the Knights bring it up. They shot in a goal! Number 33 for Sandwich putting it top shelf. Stick side over Southeastern's goalie. And Sandwich strikes first. Two minutes and 15 seconds into the first period. A beautiful wrist shot from just north of the faceoff dot on the far side. No screen or anything. Southeastern's goalie just couldn't track it and it went high over his stick side. Knights coming in at five, uh, nine, eight, and three. Good for a 525 win percentage. And now another opportunity, a backhanded shot. Glove saved by Southeastern goalie, Jonathan Sutzman on that goal. Rory Cardillo on the assist. And here's another save by Southeastern's goalie. He holds on for the faceoff. Twelve eighteen to go in period number one. One zero sandwich over Southeastern. Sandwich part of a very high scoring affair in their preliminary round matchup, an eight to six victory over Brookline. Winner of this game goes on to play Medfield, who beat Nosset three nothing. That game will be on Saturday, March second. Behind their net. Important to note, we do not have rosters, so it'll be an interesting 45 minutes. There's 
number 15 for the Hawks. He's trying to chip it back to the right side of the goal line and Sandwich able to clear out, but Southeastern's defense picks it up. Dump and change, it'll be icing. We're at the home of the Canton Bulldogs, who are the top seed in this Division II bracket, 20-0-1 on the season, a 976 win percentage. Luckily, they're on the other side of the bracket. So Southeastern's only chance to face them would be in the South Sectional Final. Shot goes wide, might have been touched by the stick of Sandwich's goalie. Shot deflected and it hit a stick out in front, might have gotten the end of the goaltender's pad. Now a stick saved by Sandwich's goalkeeper and the Knights able to clear out. 10 minutes to go here in the first period, 1-0 Sandwich over Southeastern. The Knights looking for a monumental upset as a 15 seed over the second seeded Knights. Man rush, it's three on three, as it turns out for the Hawks, but able to keep it in now, nine minutes to go on the first. Good diving block for the Knights, allow them to have an offensive rush, easily broken up. Takeaway, can the Knights do anything? Yes, number five, able to poke it from the higher of the two hash marks, and the goalie just let it dribble between his legs, and we're all tied up. 8.34 to go in the first. goal and a goal that should have been an easy save. And work on that goal for the Hawks. Shot, this one zings high and wide. Game starting off at 5 o'clock p.m., which is notable for a few reasons. Sandwich is at least an hour and a half away from the Canton Ice House. So they would have had to get on a bus at right after school, it would seem, to get up here with enough time to Lace them up and warm up. Exactly halfway through the first period, all knotted up at one goal apiece. This one cleared out. Sandwich throwing a shot on net. And now it's a three on two up ice for the Hawks. And it turns into a two on one. A shot sticked away easily by Sandwich's goalie. 
as those men rush to get back for the sandwich defense. Stick save, sandwich, and they cover for the faceoff. Seven on one to go, all knotted up. One goal apiece, Southeastern with a majority of shots, but quality scoring opportunities. I'd call even so far. High off glass to get it back deep in the sandwich zone. Number two has it, unable to lodge a shot, but he takes it away again. Now a bad angle shot, chest save. Sandwich and an upcoming face off. Shot in, a good blocker save there by Sandwich's goalie. This will go all the way down the river for an icing. There's two schools with a little bit of history. A couple of years ago, we traveled down to Sandwich High School for the Hawks matchup against the Sandwich Knights in men's basketball. That was a fun road trip. It took us north of two hours to get there. And a shot blocked away by Southeastern's defense. And they're having all sorts of trouble clearing it out of their own zone. This one took a funky bounce off of the ref behind the net, and Southeastern able to clear it. Not out yet, five and a half to go in the first period, and now Southeastern dumps it all the way down the ice. Icing against the Hawks brings it all the way back 200 feet down in the Southeastern side of the rink. there on a questionable hit in front of the sandwich bench. And an offsides called. Shout out to our friends, especially Rick Comfort over at Mass High School Hockey, whose website has provided us with rosters. Matt Lavoy, the captain of the Hawks, doing it all number two for Southeastern. Important to note, this is a co-op program, Southeastern, the tag team with West Bridgewater. I believe this is the third or fourth year of that, and a good save there by Southeastern's goalie. Dumping it in for the Hawks, four and a half to go in the first. Now it's number five, that's Dan Munro. Yeah. 
Matt Lavoie, number two for the Hawks, having a tremendous year. 22 goals to go with 18 assists, 40 points, a blistering pace. And Monroe, who has had a lot to say in this game so far, 14 goals to 10 assists on the year they are Southeastern's leading scorers. But PJ Peach, wait till you hear this stat line. Number nine for the Hawks. The senior defenseman, 17 goals, 49 assists. That's 66 points on the air for Page. Now a shot, glove save, loose. And Southeastern's goalie able to dive on it. Sandwich winning the face off immediately covered by Southeastern. Goalie number 33 getting the start today. Corey Mann, the senior, has played in eight and two thirds games this year. Nine goals against, good for an average of 1.04 goals against average and a save percentage of 934. Good passing here by the Knights. A shot walked away and the wraparound attempt might have gotten the end of the pillow and the rebound attempt is still loose. Southeastern's gonna get there, that is Monroe. The shot goes wide. Sandwich relentless pressure here. Another shot looking for the deflection out in front, doesn't go. The Knights are swarming, finally they save by Southeastern's goaltender, Corey Mann, and he holds on for the faceoff. 2.39 to go in the first period, still knotted up at one goal apiece. That fluky goal by Southeastern was the equalizer. This one going up and into the Southeastern bench. down, icing waved off. Miscommunication on the pass, and Lavoie able to keep it in. The late offsides waved up, waved off, excuse me, as Southeastern tags up. Now a shot from the point by number 15 of the Hawks. So popping up into the high slot. Southeastern unable to capitalize, but still in. Liam Leiden. The sophomore defenseman getting some big minutes on the far side. An ugly collision. As this one sticked away and knocked back. We've got a whistle stoppage. The net came off the moorings. 135 to go in the first. All knotted up at one. Deflected loose. And Monroe didn't know where it was. Now it's Lavoie dumping it in. 110 to go in the period. So it's taking over very easily. 
taking over, dumping it far corner, but deflected away by number nine of the Hawks. Right outside, waved off, there's now sandwich tags up, 30 seconds to go in the period, and the Knights back up ice, three on three. This one deflected up into the protective netting. Face off with 20.7 seconds to go. Team to go. Southeastern's gonna have one last rush. Number 21 taking it for the Hawks. Now five seconds to go. And it looks like Southeastern will not be able to get a shot off. That is indeed the case. End of the first period, one to one. We've seen a fluky goal that knotted things back up at one for Southeastern and the sandwich goal. Kind of a fluke, no screen, should have been saved. Goalie wants that one back. A lot to talk about in the intermission. One to one going into the first break. We're gonna step aside, take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. Hi, I'm Hannah Hart and I'm here to talk if you're willing to listen. So I lived my whole life without knowing that depression was a real thing. I thought depression was like kind of the same thing as being sad or bored or whatever. As I got older and my life got bigger and broader, I still kind of carried what felt like a lead jacket with me wherever I went. Like there was this inherent sense of sadness that no amount of talk therapy was seeming to sort through. Eventually I started going to a different therapist and she was like, well, it just sounds like, you know, you have depression. I was like, oh, so? Now what? I personally did a lot of research, I started reading about it, and I found a lot of like-minded people that were like, oh my God, you experienced the same thing, there's not just something wrong with me? And as I started to realize what was going on with me, I was able to express it better to the people around me. One of the most important things to remember if you're reaching out to someone you love who's keeping something inside is patience. And don't get frustrated. And if the conversation doesn't go well, don't feel like, oh man, I did this. Set your intention before you even pick up the phone. And for me, it's no matter how this goes, it's not about me. I'm trying because I feel compelled to try and I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna listen. A good rule of thumb, listen twice as much as you speak. If somebody wants advice, they're gonna go, I don't know, what do you think I should do? And that's when you tell them. I feel like we have a tendency to wanna fix problems and solve and give people advice. If you just did this, this and this, you'd feel better, okay? Great, thanks, it's resolved, chick, chick. And I do this too. But that's only because we don't want to see the person we love suffering. But unfortunately, sometimes we have to let them suffer in that moment so they can let their suffering out. If somebody's starting to cry and it makes you feel really awkward and really uncomfortable, just sit with it, man, because odds are they need to cry. Your friends want to help you. Your friends want to be there for you. They just don't know how. For instance, my partner's like, why can't I make you happy? And I'm like, this is my happy. So it's okay to take some time and research what might be the right thing for you. When I'm really stressed out or I'm really feeling not my best, I just need someone to be like, yeah? And then I could be like, yeah, word vomit, word vomit, word vomit, word vomit, and then I'll feel better. It's not about telling every single person in your life, hey guys, I'm depressed today. It's about finding the support in your life so you know who to tell. That way, they can be there for you, and you're not just alone in the feeling anymore. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into the Canton Ice House for second period action between the Sandwich Knights and the Southeastern Regional slash West Bridgewater Hawks. Once again, I'm Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action. High above the ice here in a game that is knotted at one goal apiece. The 15th seeded Knights wearing their navy blue jerseys, gold trim around the white lettering. The 
Hawks, on the other hand, their home whites, blue shorts, and blue trim around the royal blue numbers. Matt Lavoie has been the game changer for the Knights, number two in white. He's over in the corner pressuring the puck now. Sandwich has demonstrated phenomenal passing and ability to keep the puck in the zone. Now it is a blocker save by Mann. Mann has had a phenomenal game in net so far for the Hawks. Now shot blocked away. Long saucer pass took a bounce off LaVoy's skate, but he still gets behind the sandwich defense. Tries to backhand it out to the blue line unsuccessful, and now a bone crushing hit by PJ Page. Page with it now, trying to create an opportunity, unsuccessful in that effort. And now it's a two on one off ice for the Knights, and an offsides. But Sandwich able to tag up. Quick start to the period, already two minutes in. This one ramped up and into the Southeastern Regional Bench. It's the first round matchup for Southeastern. Sandwich having a prelim excuse me, preliminary round matchup which they defeated Brookline eight to six. Here's a shot, this one's going to ramp up and fall behind the net. Everybody thought it was gonna hit the netting and call for a face off. Southeastern has it, this one sticked away off the outside of the post. And back behind the goal line, now Sandwich has it. Coming out of their net, in their own zone. Here's number 27 trying to get a shot off. He does block or save by CJ Mann. Matt English dumping it far corner for the Hawks. Now English has it. He throws it towards the net through the open crease and out the other side. And the Knights take over. Slap shot, pillow saved by Mann. The Knights able to keep it in. English bringing it around the boards. And here's number five, that is Dan Monroe. He dumps it in, Southeastern changes out. And Linehan able to keep it in for the Hawks. Now it's English. English shot blocked and it's going to Turn into a foot race that won't end up mattering as men sticked it aside. in the neutral zone before finding its way into the southeastern defensive zone. Slap shot from the red line and sticked aside by Sandwich's goaltender. Offside's waved off, southeastern tagging up. Ten and a half to go here in the second. Still nodded at one goal apiece. And Southeastern calling for a high stick and now a hit from behind. Also no call, no penalties called yet today in this game. Lavoy sticking it down at the blue line, trying to make a nice move. He throws one on net and it ping-ponged around the lower slot before Sandwich able to clear out. Now the Knights launching a shot blocked aside. Swenson all the way down but not far enough for icing on the Hawks and 
That well, would have been offsides if Lavoy had clean possession of it. Thrown on net, unsuccessful. Now Page throws it, and that's deflected off of one of the sandwich legs. Number 15 couldn't handle it at the blue line. It goes all the way down. That was Liam Leiden. And the Hawks trying to catch Sandwich in a change. Unsuccessful in that effort. off of Monroe's stick and Sandwich picks up the loose trash in the neutral zone. 8.56 to go in the second period, still knotted at one goal apiece. Here is Leiden. Cage behind the net, nowhere to go with it. He's being de facto double teamed by two Knights. Thrown on net, and that hit one of the nights where the sun don't shine. Number 14 skating very gingerly over to the bench. Once all the way down, icing waved off. Check thrown behind the southeastern net. An opportunity for the Knights and a goal. Sandwich taking a lead. 7:53 to go in the second. Number 17 had a big part in that goal. I believe it was number 16 that ended up tapping it home. Sandwich up two to one, 7.53 to go in the second. Southeastern has to answer. Man was in an all out scrum in his crease trying to clear it out. Sandwich just kept pressuring and poking at it. Sandwich goal scored by number 33, Jonathan Sutton. Jonathan Sutzman, his second goal of the afternoon. McDermott on the assist, and Hanley on the assist, the secondary assist. Poked out of the defensive zone, now 7-10 to go in the second. Rister sticked away by Sandwich's goaltender. This one goes wide, 6.35 to go now in the second. with a quick change and P.J. Page gets leveled and offsides waved off as Sandwich tags up. Still no penalties called more than halfway through this game. That's P.J. Page with it. Page shot sticked away into the protective netting. By Sandwich's goaltender, 6.04 to go the second. Comes away with it, and his backhanded shot sticked away. Southeastern 
still with possession in the offensive zone. Now a shot deflected wide and Sandwich trying to clear it out. They are successful in that effort, but all the way down for an icing. Seated Knights and Southeastern going at it for the right to play Medfield in the MIAA South Sectional quarterfinal. Winner of that faces the winner of Westwood and Bishop Feehan down at Gallo Ice Arena and Bourne. That game more than likely would face off against Canton. It's the number one seed. 20 0 and 1 on the year of the Bulldogs. Five minutes to go here in the second period. Sandwich hanging on to that two to one lead, trying to add to that, sticked away by Mann, and he will opt to cover for the faceoff. Sandwich winning the faceoff, backhanded shot goes well wide. Sandwich able to recover possession. And this one ramps high off glass on the end boards. Very lenient refs here today. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. This one off the end of men's glove into the corner. Southeastern having all sorts of trouble clearing it out of their zone, finally able to do so. And opting not to change out. Of pressure here. Mounting offensive zone time. Three and a half to go in the second, two to one sandwich. All the momentum right now for the Knights. by Southeastern's defense. Offsides calls against the Knights. Down by man covers for the face off 311 to go. Pat saved man and he goes on for another face off 303 to go.
shot from just north of the red line for Southeastern. That might have been a de facto dump in, and Southeastern just trying to get something going to get some offensive momentum going their way. off in southeastern defensive zone. with it yet again two minutes to go here in the second southeastern without a quality scoring chance yet this period away by number 10 of the Hawks. Opportunity for the Knights, number five, throwing it across the slot. Nobody on the receiving end for the Hawks. And now a shot, and this one goes just wide as well. Sandwich with all the momentum. to go in the period. A shot and a goal for Sandwich, number 15, launching one from the blue line, and it's three to one Knights with 50.8 seconds to go in the second period. Southeastern not in the spot they thought they would be. At this stage of the game, the number two seed trailing by two goals to the 15th seed Sandwich Knights. Pretty much at the end of the second period. Number two got the assist. This is his goal. 30 seconds to go here in the period. A stick save. Carson Schemenauer having a good day in net for the Sandwich Knights. Schemenauer has played in all but one period of action for the Knights so far this season. The buzzer sounds at the end of the second period. It's Sandwich 3, Southeastern 1. And the Hawks have a lot of work to do if they want to capitalize on being the number two seed. And they've got some serious catch up to do here. Down two goals at the end of the second period. It is three to one sandwich. 
We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you third period action right after this. Okay, right here's fine. Yeah. A little nervous. Okay. Don't be nervous. Straighten your shoulders, yes. Smile. <laughs> Smile. Chin down. Do you get one with teeth? Mm. No, you don't like teeth ones. Or you can relax, I'm just gonna adjust for a second. Okay. Oh yeah, and um, your friend wanted to surprise you really quickly. My friend? Yeah. My friend. Okay. Hey Shannon, I'm here. It's me. What's up, Pelvis? <laughs> it's me, Sarah Lee. I just wanted to tell you I love you. And you mean the world to me, honestly. I was bullied for four years in middle school. And these girls, they would say the meanest things ever. I met you. And I smiled, you said you had the greatest smile, and it meant so much to me. You know, I was a jerk a lot of times, and I didn't really treat or say things that were, you know, the best. It got to a point with my eating disorder. They were like, you have to make a decision whether to eat or you can't come back to school. You just sat there, and you listened, and you gave me advice. I've never had someone who, um, who wanted to like hear what I've had to say. Because of you, I felt more comfortable and I felt welcome being at school, being the new kid, because no one else came up to me the way you did. I do know what you do for me. Like I do not ignore it. It's it's being recorded in my brain. It's it's in there. Because without you. I want to be the person I am today. Sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Lynn. <laughs> Did you know that you had such a big impact on her life? I knew that just by <clears throat> being nice to people, I could have an impact, but not that much. I didn't know that those kinds of words would be so impactful on her. So when you have the opportunity to tell somebody how much they mean to you, you need to tell them so that they can keep doing it for other people. Mm -hmm. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into the Canton Ice House for third period action between the Sandwich Knights and the Southeastern Regional Hawks. Three to one year score, Sandwich on top. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing all the action high above the ice here in Canton. The 15th seeded Knights, the second seeded Hawks going at it, Sandwich wearing their visiting navy blue jerseys. Light blue trim around the white numbers, Southeastern. Blue shorts, blue numbers, white jerseys. Southeastern with a lot of work to do. PJ Page has to lead that effort. He has had a phenomenal game on the blue line for the Hawks. Matt Lavoy trying to get it going offensively. He had a great first period before pretty much the entire team took the second period off. Now it's Page in with a full head of steam trying to get it closer to the sandwich net. And it's sticked away, and now sandwiched back the other way. Off the end boards. Three to one, your score sandwich are on top. Southeastern trying to claw their way back into this one. Two goal lead, worst lead in all sports. Absolutely. I think the only lead that even compares a little bit is a 28 to three lead in the Super Bowl. Sandwich with creative puck movement to keep it in the zone. And make it a 
makes a save and he dives on it for the face off. 13 12 to go in the third period. Beautiful facility here in Canton as this one slides all the way back uh, to center ice. Southeastern stick went flying and Trying to retrieve it as number 21 of the Hawks. Icing against the Knights. Carson Schemenauer, the junior goaltender for the Knights having himself an afternoon to remember here at the Ice House. This one sent all the way down, it will go for an icing against the Knights. So apparently a majority of the world that we live in is just realizing that Massachusetts has a town named Sandwich and thus the police cruisers in this town, rightfully so, say sandwich police. And everybody thinks that's hilarious. Still no penalties called in this game with 11.43 to go in regulation. Southeastern has to mount a comeback of all comebacks. Not going to do it here. A shot and a goal. Top shelf for number 33. Are they going to rule no goal? That was clearly in. Number 33 should have been credited. Jonathan Stutzman would have had a hat trick with that goal. I don't know what there was to dispute there. It clearly went top right corner. Southeastern escaping there. And the word escape is the right word there. This game would have been just about out of reach. If it's four to one, three to one, more manageable. This one dumped in. Southeastern with it. Ping pong's up off glass. And Sandwich able to dump it out. Back to the neutral zone. Neil Wyden chipping it up to number 21, and 21 gets decked. And still no penalty, number 21 is down. That's George Valley, and he is in a lot of pain. He took a huge shoulder to head hit right at center ice, and he is down and visibly in a lot of pain. Jacob Kent, sophomore defenseman, is in a lot of pain, and he's signaling that his head is the thing that is the issue here. He took a huge shoulder to head hit. And the Canton Ice House goes silent. 10-19 to go in the third. We have an injury timeout. Jacob Kent down on the ice. Indicating that his head is the issue and he is a long ways away from the southeastern locker room. He's going to slowly try to get to his feet. 
helped uh, up by a Southeastern trainer and Liam Lydon. Now a couple of other Hawks coming over to attempt to help. And Kent still down now on all fours. And there was no penalty called on that hit. Now Sandwich's trainer is going to come out, try to help as well. Ken up to his feet, and he's going to go to the Southeastern bench, which is notable for more than one reason. He thinks he might be able to come back at some point in this game. Our thoughts with Jacob Kent. Sophomore defenseman is on the southeastern bench. You would think they'd immediately take him to the quiet room. Now Southeastern with an additional reason to play with the B under their bonnet. Loose, a backhanded shot and a goal for Southeastern. 9.41 to go, it's a one goal game. There's a pile up right at center ice though as PJ Page scoring that one for the Hawks. And it's a one goal game with 9.41 to go. See, Southeastern just needed a reason to start scoring. Now there's a huge hit, an answer hit from Matt Lavoy. Joe Murphy getting the assist, and Liam Lydon assisting on Page's goal. It is three to two with 9.21 to go in the third. Icing against the Hawks. Very emotional goal for Southeastern. Very sensitive goal. This one off the glove of man. And nice and called. Southeastern calling that they touch it north of the red line. Shout out to the DJ here at the Canton Ice House. And we're finally going to have the first penalty of the afternoon called against the Sandwich Knights. And the Southeastern crowd comes alive as they will go to the game's first power play. It's going to go against number 25 for a slash. Zachary Brooks in the box. Two minutes for slashing and a Man advantage for the Southeastern Hawks. The boy with it back hitting it back deep. So 
Southeastern clears it, but not all the way down. Southeastern takes it back to their own faceoff dots before resetting their offense. Shot goes, no, oh, it ping pong back to the high crease. And Southeastern wasn't able to tap it home. Now high slot, Lavoie shot, loose. And it stays out. Now it's a shorthanded two on one for the Knights. A shot off of the knob of the stick of man into the protective netting. 108 to go in the man advantage and in offense's own face off of the sandwich Knights. 7.52 to go in the third period. DJ Page with it now. He's got the last goal for the Southeastern Hawks. Page, top of the key. Face off dot, Lavoie, glove save for Schumannauer. Good keep in there by Page, an acrobatic move to keep it. Right on the blue line. Now chip back to Page. He slides it down to the faceoff dot, into the crease, and deflected but wide. Number five, Dan Monroe. 15 seconds to go on the main advantage. Page with it. Now down to Lavoie. Stick save, a shot and a goal! Tie game! Dan Monroe in the right place at the right time on the far side of the net. He cleaned up the loose garbage, and we're all tied up at three goals apiece with 6.54 to go in the third period. And how about Matt Lavoy on the assist, throwing that initial shot on net that was sticked aside by Schemenauer. And Dan Monroe in the right place at the right time, and now Southeastern with all the momentum. And it is proven once again that a two goal lead is the worst lead in all the sports. PJ Page on the secondary assist. Sent out to Page. Here's Shane Linehan. Linehan skying it into Schemenauer, and it's underneath him somewhere. 6.01 to go in the third period. Page shot, loose. It stays up, but Southeastern with an opportunity here. The Knights are scrambling, and Schemenauer was down. This one off of Schemenauer's chest. Now to the high slot. Now this could be a partial break for the Knights. Here's comes Sandwich number five launching a shot, and a glove save by Mann. What a third period here at the Canton Ice House. Corey Mann and his 104 goals against Savage and 934 save percentage coming in, a hand pass called against Sandwich here. It's a hand pass against the Sandwich Knights. One too many Hawks on the ice here. 
Bobcat pass leading to a defense's own faceoff, and here's Lavoie launching one loose. It's still loose, and it pops in. Southeastern has the lead. 5.20 to go in the third period. Four to three, Southeastern. There was a whole mess of Hawks in the crease. Which one's gonna be credited with the goal? 19, looks like the call from the official. And that is Adam Falcio on the sophomore forward. 13 goals on the season, nine assists, good for 22 points. Timeout here by Sandwich as they are scrambling. Matt English credited with the goal. Assisted by James Cooper and Matt Lavoy. Lavoy's third point on the afternoon. Now it's a race against time for the Southeastern Hawks trying to escape here with a miraculous comeback with 5.20 to go in the third. They were down three to one, now they're up four to three. Three unanswered goals here for the Hawks. This one tipped up high and Sandwich takes over. Five minutes to go now in the third period. against the Hawks, 4.41 to go in the third. So popped up off glass and Southeastern almost with an opportunity. Number 14 couldn't figure out where the puck was gonna land. Saved by man as Southeastern started to bunch up. Now Sandwich moving the puck around and a good diving block and Southeastern able to clear it out. 3.56 to go in the third period. Southeastern hanging on to that one goal lead. Kinney, number 14 of the Hawks, has had a lot of ice time in the last couple of minutes here. Southeastern dumps it back down. Three and a half to go in the third. And the Hawks are playing the clock management game. This one goes for an icing. Sent in by number 10 of the Hawks, Matt English. Credited with the go ahead goal here. Lavoy makes a nice stick move. The more time bleeds off the clock now. Three minutes to go here, four to three Southeastern. 
No penalty going to be called on that hit from behind. Normally that'd be, be holding. This one high off glass into the neutral zone and Southeastern calling for a hand pass, but it never touched another stick. PJ Page dumps it deep. Two and a half minutes to go here in the third period. Four to three Southeastern. Number nine of the Knights, Jake Campbell. 2.13 to go and now we'll start to look for so, uh, Sandwich rather to empty their net for the extra attacker. What a change of narrative here in the third period. And Sandwich is gonna call their, uh, Southeastern is gonna call their timeout here. 2.13 to go. Four to three, Southeastern Hawks over the Sandwich Knight. Sandwich thought for a minute they were gonna get out of here unscathed and defeat the number two seed in the tournament. The outcome of this game determines what's for dinner. 2.13 to go in regulation four to three hawks over the knights three unanswered goals for southeastern here in this third period i'm imagining that intermission speech was very herbs brooks-esque pj page has had a great afternoon but I think you give the uh, the game puck to Matt Lavoy, who has three points on the afternoon and has just been under the night's skin all day. Matt English, the freshman with the go-ahead goal. Well, the keys to the game brought to you by Derek Sanderson. Number one, score more goals than the other team. Southeastern seems to have taken that one to heart. Key number two, constant four checking. And key number three, sharpen your skates because man, it's a sheet of ice out there. Two minutes to go. And Schemenauer starts drifting towards his hash marks. Now he's going to quickly get back in net as Southeastern brings it back into the neutral zone. One forty-five to go. And this one dribbles all the way back down into the night zone. All the way down, and that's going to be an icing against the Knights. Not what they need with the buck thirty-five to go. to take the face off. Empty net for the Knights, extra attacker on. 120 to go here in regulation. Number 19 shoots, Santa goes just wide. He was north of the red line, so no icing. This one's gonna go for icing against the Knights, however. 1-0-4 to go, and Southeastern in a commanding position here. Shot off the face off, saved by Schemenauer, who's got to abandon ship fairly quickly here, under a minute to go. <laughs> 45 seconds, sandwich with it, taking it onto the neutral zone, and there goes Schemenauer. 
Extra attacker on for the Knights. 40 seconds to go. Sandwich able to keep it in, backhanding around the boards. A gaping four by six gap on one end of the ice and Southeastern's trying to hit that. This one skied down, it will not have the momentum to go. 20 seconds to go here, Southeastern with a miraculous comeback, almost complete. A shot, glove saved by Mann. He holds on for the faceoff with 14.8 seconds to go. Six on five for the Knights. Southeastern winning the very important faceoff now. 10 seconds to go. We'll let the crowd count it down for you. And a stoppage with 1.5 seconds left. Thank you, refs. The puck was on the boards. There's an outside chance if you win the faceoff, you just tee up a slap shot. Not incredibly likely. The buzzer sounds and Southeastern has completed the miraculous comeback here at the Canton Ice House. The Southeastern Regional Hawks move on to place Medfield. A final score of four to three, Southeastern over the Sandwich Blue Knights. And what an unbelievable effort in the third period for the Southeastern Regional Hawks. They were down three to one at the end of the second and they came screaming back with three unanswered goals here in the third period. Gonna give the player of the game, Matt Lavoie for the Hawks. Three points, uh, goal and two assists. Admirable effort by both goaltenders. Southeastern moves on to play Medfield on Saturday afternoon. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. But the Hawks moving on, the number two seed. Scared for a bit there that they were gonna be upset by the 15th seeded Sandwich Knights. Southeastern moves on to play Medfield. Four to three, your final score, Southeastern over Sandwich. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our cameraman, the Greek freak, Phil Philippides. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.